Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Pastor Jan. Good morning to those of you who are joining. Uh, some of you, I can tell you're joining, but I can't tell who you are. Can't see your name. <clears throat> handle there. Amen. Praise God. But look, good morning to you. I want to get started this morning. Uh, I'm dealing with part two of a series that I'm teaching. Uh, and um, I think it's a great time for this particular series. Um, it's called the security of eternal life according to the scripture. Security of eternal life according to the scripture. And this is part two of security of eternal life according to the scripture part two. If you would do me a favor, amen, and go ahead and invite someone, amen, praise God. Good morning, Sister Sandra Thompson. Good morning, Sister Wazetta. God bless you, my good friends. Amen, my good friends in the faith. God bless you, my sisters. Amen, praise God. Um, go ahead and, and uh, invite somebody and share this broadcast. Um, I'm going to be dealing with something I, I know that in, in a lot of areas uh, that's kind of uh, <clears throat> um, debatable, but I think I think it's important that um, I teach and preach on this. Uh, this is what I stand on, um, and let me just say on the off on the onset, Amen. Praise God that uh, you know growing in Christ and growing in the Word of God is very very important, and, and that's what I try to do on a daily basis. So. And I believe this message is going to help, amen, solidify and help uh, encourage a lot of people's faith in the Lord Jesus. Glory to God uh, in, his, in his faithfulness um, and in God's faithfulness toward us more so than our faithfulness toward him. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. And so, amen. Listen, I want to get into this word. I want to pray and get into this word. But go ahead and invite somebody. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Amen. It is 630 in the morning. Amen. Praise God. Christopher J. Fitzgerald, Prophet Christopher J. Fitzgerald. Some call me pastor and some call me teacher, but it's all good. Amen. This doesn't really matter as long as we get this word. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to pray <clears throat> and get into this teaching this morning. Again, this is part number two and this series entitled uh, Security, uh, the Security of Eternal Life According to the Scripture. Glory to God. The Security of Eternal Life According to the Scripture. Part two. All right. So let's pray. Amen. Praise God. And for those of you who need to write me, uh, please write me at uh, prophetfits at gmail.com. That's prophetfits at gmail.com. Or you can message me either way. Amen. Praise God. I will respond to questions um, and, uh, and the like. Uh, I look forward to your comments. I look forward to your questions. I look forward to your words of encouragement. Amen. Praise God. And any other words you want to see in praise the Lord. All right, but let's pray. Father, <clears throat> this is the day that you have made and uh, we're grateful. Uh, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to serve. Uh, we're grateful for this opportunity, Father God, to, uh, to testify, to be a witness, to approach this wonderful engrafted word with meekness that we may use this word, gain from this word and grow thereby. Uh, so, Father, we thank you that you are the all-knowing, all-wise God. There is nothing that escapes you. There is nothing that you have to learn or nothing that's in darkness or nothing that you have to figure out. You know everything about everything, about everybody. None of us, nothing of us is hidden from thee. And so, Father, this morning I pray in the name of your son Jesus that you would make your plan of salvation and uh, all of the things that go along with this great plan of salvation, make these things plain to us so that we will not miss out on any good thing that Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, gave himself for us to have. And now, Father, we believe that your son Jesus is seated at your very right hand on the throne of heaven. And we believe that he's making intercession for us right now. And we believe, Father God, that you sent the Holy Ghost through him to us right now 
and the Holy Spirit is in us and inside of us, he's interceding for us. So Father, we pray today that as we open our mouth and we declare and talk about this great revelation that you've given to us, this eternal word, that we would do it with accuracy, that we would do it with the right attitude of love, uh, the right attitude of bringing praise and glory to you, and not about ego, and not about being arrogant, not about any of those things for ourselves, but all glory and honor belongs to you. So, Father, bless this word as it goes forth today. In Jesus' name, erase and eradicate confusion. In Jesus' name, and God, we give you praise for it now. Amen and amen. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of opening statements. Amen, praise God to read to you for part two. Um, uh, eternal life. Eternal life is the ultimate benefit of the promises of God. Eternal life is the ultimate benefit of the promises of God. Nothing should suppress or surpass eternal life. Whatever comes or goes next, the glory of eternal life causes all else to pale in comparison. Subsequently, I want to read this particular um, working definition to you. Amen. Praise God. Uh, eternal security or eternal life or eternal salvation which we call, often referred to as salvation, occurs when a person is regenerated once and for all by the Spirit of God as a sovereign act of God through faith in Jesus as the Son of God and the only Savior for men. This eternal security, also known as eternal life, is not a work of man's own doing, but uh, man's own doing. I'm sorry, it's not a work of man's own doing, from beginning nor throughout, but rather a divine operation of, of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Last time we talked, <clears throat> we dealt with part one, which was salvation is done by an act of, of the Godhead and cannot be redone or undone once it is done. And we gave scriptures for that, amen, praise God, that eternal life is not temporary life, eternal life is not fleeting Eternal life is not flimsy. And we talked about how our believing takes place. Uh, I quoted to you John 6, 44, which says that, amen, no man can come to Jesus except they're drawn by the Father. I uh, read to you John 14, 6, which basically says that Jesus said, no man can go to the Father but through me. We looked at the issue of grace, amen, by faith in Ephesians 2, 5 through 8. And uh, we looked at the fact that a person must believe the gospel. That's, that's how we get saved, and we looked at that. And uh, faith is not works of the law. We looked at that briefly, amen, and other things as well. Then we also took a quick turn, and we looked at the issue of what happens when a believer falls asleep or a believer is dying or a believer dies or what, as what the Bible says when a believer is asleep. And we looked at three things about that that should give us encouragement is that, number one, is that when we as believers fall asleep, we are in a, we're in a far better place in a far better position, a far better place. It also, amen, we also look at the fact that we have peaceful consciousness, amen, that when a believer does fall asleep or die, that believer is still alive to God, and that believer is conscious, is aware of God, aware of Jesus, and we looked at that, amen, praise God, in the book of Revelation, praise God, um, and then we also looked at the fact that when a believer falls asleep or uh, dies, as we say, that believers in a place of uh, rest. And again, we looked at that in Revelation, the book of Revelation as well. So, amen, we looked at some things concerning uh, eternal life, which, which basically gives the value of eternal life um, based on what the scripture teaches about what eternal life gives to us. Amen. And I think that's very important today because I think a lot of things, we've let a lot of things take the place of the value of the importance of eternal life to us, Amen. And um, uh, I think I think we've made we've allowed, and in some in some circles, in some cases, people have allowed other messages and other mo motivational type messages, other t messages dealing with the temporal, dealing with the temporary, the temporal, or the monetary, or the momentary. They've made those things basically the calling cards of the church, which but that that was never given to us by God as being our chief message, amen. Our chief message is this eternal hope, this eternal life, amen. And uh, 
There are people right now that are fainting and going through all kinds of things because they don't understand the value of what they possess, amen, what God has given them, amen, praise God. And so uh, I pray, amen, that this particular series, amen, helps rekindle some of that, amen, enjoyment, <clears throat> some of that fire and enjoyment that we have. This teaching is going to show, uh, as, as we've already started, is going to show that it is only through a misapplication, misinterpretation, or misunderstanding of scripture uh, uh, only through those type of things can salvation be, can a person's salvation be lost or lost and then regained over and over again, uh, as is the mental belief of many. So I'm asking for your patience in this series because I have to build several foundation and fundamental things to you concerning salvation before we start addressing some of the passages that people are, people use uh, and they try to use certain passages as proofs that salvation can be flimsy, salvation can be salvation can be fickle, or salvation can be fleeting. Amen. And um, so we're going to deal with those. I I I ask for your patience. Uh, if you if you stay with this particular series, Amen. Praise God. Almost every category or verse or categories of type scripture that people use to try to prove to you that a person can lose their salvation. I'm going to break it down to you contextually wise to show you that that's not what the Bible is saying at all. Amen. Praise God. And I'm on and I'm showing you right now that salvation number one, that's something that God does. And when God does it, God does not undo it. Amen. And that's why I started with that point first. Amen. Praise God. I started with that dealing with that point first. And we're going to deal with that point some more. Glory to God. And so I want you to stay with me and be patient with me. Amen. Praise God. Because, uh, I want to take my time and I want to do this. <clears throat> One of the things that gets me, <clears throat> and I say this to you, um, when I hear saints, when I hear people that are saved, say words like, I just want to be saved, or I, I just want to make it in. I just want to make it in. I just want to be saved. <clears throat> Let me say this to you. I understand what you're saying, and I'm prophet because you're not trying to, I'm not trying to be too hard on anybody. <clears throat> but I want you to understand that Salvation is not something that God gives to you and take back. Amen. You will never be able to earn salvation, not day one of salvation, and not the day when salvation begins when we see Jesus face to face. Because the Bible says that salvation is going to be revealed. The scripture said that salvation is going to be revealed. So not the day when you first call on the Lord Jesus Christ to get saved, and not the day on that day when salvation is revealed. And no day in between will you or I ever be good enough or earn being saved. Period. Glory to God. You can't show me that anywhere in scripture. Glory to God. It is a work, amen, it is a work that God does in us. Glory to God. He's, he saves us. He keeps us. Amen. Praise God. He's faithful. That's a good place to shout right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So let me go a little bit further here. My teaching, amen, praise God. But I wanted you to understand that there's a lot of misapplication, a lot of misinterpretation, a lot of misunderstanding of scripture that makes people feel like they can be saved and lose their salvation, you know, and then they can get it back. You know what I'm saying? You know, and do things of that nature. And the Bible does not teach that. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, glory to be to God. And we're going to explain what some people are going through mentally. Mentally, some people are going through certain things that in, in their mental belief, amen, praise God, in their mental belief, sometimes they're led to believe that they've been so bad, amen, that they've sinned now. Oh, God threw with you. Glory to God, amen, praise God. That you are no longer part of the family. I've kicked you out of the family, amen, praise God. I, I, you, 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 I, you were reborn, but I undid, <laughs> please give me, I undid your reborn, amen, praise God. No, glory to God, amen, praise God. God knew who he was getting into relationship with. He knew who he was saving. He knew everything about you before he drew you to his son, Jesus. And before Jesus saved you and allowed you to have access to God the Father, there was nothing about you, past, present, or future, glory to God, amen, that can surprise God. Bless his holy name. All right, praise God. Let's go, amen, praise God, into some, some deeper stuff here. All right, so let's deal with this first of all, this next point. Next point is this. Salvation is always accompanied by genuine works of righteousness. 
Salvation is always accompanied by genuine works of righteousness. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 through 20, amen, praise God. Uh, you know, I'm going to take my time and go through this with some of you guys. Amen, praise God. Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 through 20. <clears throat> It says this to us, glory to God, all right? Um, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, uh, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Glory to God. Now, I want you to know in verse 20, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. I want you to know that when you read this scripture, the Bible here is not talking about, amen, praise God, a Christian whose fruit is not good enough, amen, is going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. No, that's not what it's talking about. The Bible is talking about basically that when you become a Christian or when you become a Christian, amen, you become a good tree, amen, and when you become a good tree, you're going to have good fruit, amen, praise God. Now, you may not produce as much good fruit as the other person or the same type of fruit as somebody else, but you're going to have good fruit. My point is, is that salvation is always accompanied by genuine works of righteousness. There's going to be some type of work of works of righteousness that's going to be produced in your life. Amen, praise God. The moment you get saved, the moment you get saved, genuine works of righteousness is going to begin in your life. Glory to God. Salvation produces this. Amen. It, 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 it produces this according to scripture. Glory to God. All right. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Titus 2, glory to God, 11 through 14. We talk about salvation is always accompanied by genuine works of righteousness. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Look what it says here. For, by, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men teaching us. See, it said the grace of God has appeared to all men. And this says that this grace that God has delivered to all men, for all men to see, it teaches us something. What does it teach us? It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, I want you to see something there. When you get genuine salvation, amen, there's an anointing in you that comes in you by the Holy Spirit, and there's certain things that it teaches you. Amen, praise God. This is why many of you, amen, praise God, when you got saved, that's when you start dealing with conviction. That's when you start feeling bad about things. Amen, praise God. Amen. I remember before I got saved, there was a lot of things in my life I never felt bad about. Amen. I had no thought about it, no inkling. I, you know, I was just doing what I was doing, right? But after I met Jesus, after I got saved, all of a sudden there was something in me. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. And what this scripture is talking about is, is that it, this is part of salvation. Amen. The grace of God, when it comes into your life, when God's grace comes to your life, it begins to teach you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And that right there in of itself is actually, amen, a sign of salvation. It's not a sign that you're not saved. It's actually a sign that you are saved. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It actually tells you that you are saved because before you didn't have a struggle. Amen. Praise God. You weren't struggling with, you know, works of righteousness or, or even, even, and I'm not even dealing with the issue of sin right now. I'm not even dealing with that topic yet. I'm just dealing with the issue of works of righteousness. When you get saved, amen, praise God. When you get saved, amen, you want to do righteous things. Amen, praise God. And you know something interesting I found out, that when you first get saved, amen, praise God, you want to do righteous things. You want to do righteous work. It's in you. Amen. And believe it or not, amen, praise God, you begin to be harder on yourself probably than anyone else at that time. Because now you're dealing with this thing. It's working on the inside of you, and you're not used to dealing with that. And that's that's what's going on, amen, praise God. So let me go, let me stay with the scripture here. I can give other, I can give uh, uh, um, explanations of that, but I'm just trying to explain to you what this scripture is saying to you. This scripture is not a scripture that's written to disqualify you from salvation or disqualify your salvation. It actually qualifies your salvation, amen, praise God, amen. It tells you that something is happening in you and it's producing something. 
Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So genuine salvation produces works of righteousness. And one of the ways it does that is it offers you instructions. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. It, it, it comes with that. All right. Praise God. According to this particular scripture. Amen. Praise God. Now, look with me, if you would, James chapter 2. Amen. Come on, let's go to James chapter 2. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. James chapter 2. And when you get to James chapter 2, we're going to, be, we're going to begin reading at verses 14. I don't know if I want to read all this or not. Amen. Praise God. Um, say, well, let's read all of it. This is it's a pretty popular scripture, so you should be able to get through this pretty, pretty easy. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 24. It says, what do it profit, uh, my brethren, Though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what do it in profit? Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Now I want you to understand something here. You got to got to get you guys got to get this. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, well, let me let me finish reading first. Uh, yea, a man may say, "Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works." Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou? Uh, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Now, again, this is a very popular and traditional scripture that we've read for years, and many of you, many of us have, amen, praise God. What this scripture is telling us, amen, praise God, is that when you get genuine faith, genuine saving faith, with genuine salvation, amen, praise God, it will be accompanied with works, glory to amen. Works will come from that faith, amen, praise God, amen. You don't work to get faith. You don't work to have faith, amen, glory to God. You don't work to be saved, but because you are saved, when salvation comes, when that genuine faith comes, when that saving faith comes, then genuine works of righteousness is produced in your life, glory to God, amen, amen. It does this in you. It produces works of righteousness, and this is what James is saying, that true faith is always going to be accompanied by works of righteousness, glory to God, amen, by works of righteousness, things that being done, uh, praise God, that are approved in the sight of God, hallelujah, approved in the sight of God, hallelujah, and there's so many things that are approved in the sight of God that I can't even list all of them, amen, glory to God, there's so many things that are approved of God that I can't even list all of them, you can't even list all of the things that are approved of God, amen, praise God, that the Holy Spirit will produce in you or that will salvation can and will produce in you, glory to God, amen, from your place of salvation, amen. I right, praise God. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. It says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Glory to God. Amen. So it is important, amen, praise God, that we are reminded, amen, praise God, of what salvation does in the believer. Glory be to God. It is important that we hear that, that we read that, that we study that, that we meditate on that. Amen, praise God. Amen, glory. It's very important. But I want you to understand something, amen, praise God, that your works, amen, praise God, never qualify or disqualify you from salvation. However, salvation, amen, praise God, does produce work in you. Glory to God. It is maintained throughout this teaching and throughout the scripture that man is saved by faith alone in Christ alone. But saving faith produces works of faith in the believer. 
And this, beloved, according to the scripture, is undeniable. Glory to God. It is absolutely undeniable. Glory to God. This is about what salvation and saving faith has begun in you. Glory to God. You must know when it is God, you must know that when it is God who has started something in you, that he will complete it. Glory to God. Now, I'm saying this to you because I want you to understand this, that this is about what salvation starts in you. Glory to God. This is about what salvation begins in you. This is about what starts happening in your being, through your being, that is good, that is great, that is from God. It begins to take place in your life. Glory to God. Amen. These works of righteousness that comes from the faith or comes from the salvation that's now, amen, that you have, that you have received from God. And God is the one that starts these things in your life. He's the one that starts this in your life. The Bible says in Philippians 1 and 6, let's read that, amen, praise God, real quickly. Amen, praise God, because that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm dealing with what, 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 what starts in your life when you get saved. Genuine works of righteousness. You know, one thing I've discovered, that when you get saved, genuine works of righteousness begin, amen, and sometimes you don't recognize them as that. Amen, glory to God, amen. You know, the whole desire to want to learn about God, is a work of righteousness. The whole desire of wanting to do anything to help other people to learn the Bible or to learn about salvation or to be saved or even just to hear your personal testimony about your conversion to Christ, all of this is works of righteousness that begin in you when you get saved. Glory to God. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Look at Philippians 2.13. Glory to God. Philippians 2.13 says this to us. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God. God started something in you. He's going to finish it. God is working in you both to will and to do. God. Look at Romans 8.28. 20, Glory to God. Amen. Showing you these things. Romans chapter 8 and look at verses uh, 28 through 30. Glory to God. Romans 28, 28 through 30. Glory be 